Hello everyone, my name is Nachiketa and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a very handy library called as Augmenter, which you can use to augment your data set and basically visualize it and have a lot of control on how you want your data to be. Now, before actually showing you the coding part, I want to talk about why you need it so that you not only know how to execute the code, but also have a good conceptual understanding of it and what the problems are. So question number one, why do you need data augmentation? The one line technical answer is to avoid overfitting. Let me give you an example. Let's say I'm training a face detector model and basically that's a model which learns to recognize my face in any given image. So let's say I've trained it on 10 images. I only have 10 images and I have a very small data set, but the model works really well on these 10 images. But when I go to a room with different lighting conditions, I go to a well lit room or I go to a darker room, then the model fails. Or if I move in very close to the camera or when I move in very far away from the camera, then my model fails. In this scenarios, you can understand that the model has not generalized well because it has not seen a lot of images. So when you have a small data set, you can augment it. You can do a lot of things like changing the brightness, zooming in and zooming out, doing various distortions so that after the training, the model is a really generalized and well performing model. For any image classification, this is going to be a very good tool for you. So if you have used the Keras library for training deep learning models, you might be familiar with the image data generator class, which allows you to do a lot of data augmentation. But there is a lot of problems with that, which I'm going to address now. So this is the piece of code that executes data augmentation. Basically, this is a function and it can specify different features like how much you want to rotate the image, how much you want to shift the height and width of the image, Do you want to flip it or not. The problem is that you don't have a lot of transparency. First of all, you don't know exactly how many images are being generated. If you have a hundred images after augmentation, how many images are being created, right? So the Keras official documentation does not mention it, but theories are floating around on the internet, which say that in each epoch, the model will see a different variant of your training image. And there's not a lot of control you get over here. You can specify that you want to rotate the image and you want to shift the height or width, but you cannot specify how much importance you want to give to each data augmentation parameter. So that is why it could be a good idea to manually augment the data of yourself. And for that, we have a library called as augmented.py. So the GitHub code I'm going to leave in the description. And basically this is the command used to install this library. And basically you can go through this documentation. It allows you to do a lot of things like rotating the image, zooming in, zooming out of the image. And basically go through this. This is a lot of functions in this. Let me show you how it works in practice. So I'm going to be performing data augmentation on the images of roses. And basically there are image of around, I think eight roses in this. What I want to do is I, I want to provide different variants of this image to my model. So I've also added a Python file over here that does the data augmentation. If I look at the code, it looks something like this. And basically I have to import a library called as augmenter here. I'm creating a pipeline object and I have to specify where the image directory is. So make sure you specify the directory correctly. And what it will do is it will go inside this directory, extract all the images and perform the data augmentation that you ask. So for example, I've written here that I want to zoom the image and I write probability. So if the probability is high, let's say the probability is one. Then for every image, it will perform this zooming in operation. If the probability is low, then less importance will be given to this data augmentation parameter. I can specify the min and max factor, basically how much you want to zoom in and zoom out. Similarly, I can flip the image from top to bottom, basically inversing the image and I can change the brightness and I can do something called as random distortion as well. This will altogether change and alter the shape of the image as well. This can also be a very handy tool that you want and you can specify with these parameters, how much you want to distort the image. And when I write p.sample, I'm basically specifying how many images I want to create. So initially I had around eight to nine images. When I write hundred, it will basically create a hundred images. So you can play around with these parameters. So I'm going to run the code. I'm going to run the code from my command line. I'm just going to write Python and the name of the file dot py. So for this to work, you have to make sure that you have uh, installed the library first using the pip install command. And when I run this, you can see it extracts the images. It says that nine images were found and it does the data augmentation. So when you go back to the same folder, it will create a new folder by the name of output. And you can see these are the augmented images. You can see that the brightness has been changed from very bright to dark images. And some of the images have been flipped 
from top to bottom and random distortion has also been applied the shape of the flowers have also changed a little so that is why this can create a very generalized model because you're not going to see the exact same rose photo everywhere right so that is why this is a very handy tool so i'm going to leave you to explore with this documentation there are a lot of other things that you can do as well i just want to bring it to your attention that a library like this exists and if you have any doubts in this do leave them in the comments i'll try to answer it over there and if you did like this video do subscribe to this channel and i'll see you in the next video